Hey guys, it's Miss Coconut. So, I'm in this fabulous library. I mean, there are books for days. I'm really fascinated with this dictionary, though. They have, like, meanings in this dictionary, this infernal dictionary that I've never encountered. So, I've been reading, like, a few words a day, trying to absorb it all in. I've been reading a lot of books about demonology, And so that's what I wanted to talk to you about because I think a lot of people get to the point once they're like working spells and doing candle magic and writing um, sigils and etc. They get to the point where they're like, okay, well, what about spirits? How do I work with spirits? Um, So I'm going to give you a little bit of information about that today. So the legend goes that King Solomon was given a magical ring by Angel Michael. And with this ring, he was able to command spirits to do his bidding, which we say this is how he got that fabulous temple built. I love mythology. Are you guys reading any myths with fresh new occult eyes? You should be. Lots of gems in those stories. So I have my notes. I don't want to forget anything. The grimoires teach us how to conjure these spirits or adjure the spirits or summon or call. The word spirit, I think, is friendlier than demons uh, because demon really just means spirit. And we gave it a connotation that was negative um, through religious meanings, you know. So we'll just say spirit. Anyway, the grimoires teach us how to call on them. The Grimoire is a magical book or spell book or how-to book on how to conjure, how to craft magical items like talismans, how to do spells, how to summon entities. And did you realize that Grimoire is very close to grammar? And grammar is all about letters coming together to form words. The words form sentences. And that's basically what the Grimoire does for you. (laughs) So I have some basic information today. It's basic. So if you are a ceremonial magician, for example, this is not the video for you. Okay? Okay. These are for the babies, how to safely conjure. First thing you have to know, spirits are not your friends. So when you want to call them, don't like chit-chat with them. Don't ask them a bunch of questions. Don't ask them where they work and what they do and how they look, etc. Be reverent for the process that you're going through. Be deliberate. Most of the grimoires will tell you to write these sigils in dove's blood. And some of them will even tell you to write the sigils or seals in your blood. The sigil is a calling card to get the spirit's attention. So it's like their signature or their brand or their logo. Okay. Now, a lot of the grimoires, because they come out of a time when ceremonial magic was high, it is very labor extensive. And some people feel that there is more of a modern approach needed for calling or summoning because we don't have the materials and ingredients that they used to have, all right? So now some authors have taken this information and given us a more concise way to perform the rituals. But one thing I have to say is that some of the more modern authors, they kind of undermine the need for protection, and that's what I want to stress today. So personally, when it comes to writing sigils or packs, I would not use my own blood because you are binding yourself to the spirit. Spirits are like vampires, and they feed off of you. Just like if you let a lion out or tiger out and they attack and kill a human, you have to put the animal down because they will develop a taste for human blood and will want more. And that is the same way that spirits do. They are indeed like vampires. In fact, a lot of people that conjure without proper protection find themselves under attack emotionally oppressiveness, depression, mental imbalances. They feel suicidal because they haven't been taught how to properly protect themselves. So for me, blood is a no. And you know Akiva is big on that, no blood. But he does say if you're signing a pact in your blood, that's um, acceptable. 
when you approach this type of work, your mental state has to be stabilized because fears will be magnified, okay? And some spirits are so tricky, they will haunt you and torment you just because they are feeding off of the fear. So you will experience poltergeist, poltergeist activity, like screams, you may hear howling, you may feel something sitting on your bed or touch you. So if you're scared, if you have religious mindset and programming that you still have to deal with, do your shadow work before you... in start to embark on this type of activity, okay? Next, protection, protection, protection. You cannot have too much. So this is where now I come in agreement with the ancient traditions. Discover for yourself how to incorporate the lower banishing rituals into your life. You can look that up and begin to use that as part of your ritualistic practices, okay? Make sure you clean the home, make sure you bathe, make sure you have unclean clothes, and in fact, you really should have an outfit just for that. Now, the modern people tell you you don't need all that, but I think they keep taking away the severity of the rituals when you're dealing with these entities. Just my opinion. If you've been safely conjuring these spirits, entities, demons, and they come and they assist you and you're fine, okay, this video is not for you, okay? Do not doubt the efficacy of your work. So you approach it with the idea and notion that you are going to make contact. If you don't, doubt reduces the outcome. Doubt reduces the outcome. Next protection prayers. And I may offer one. I did see a really great one that's in the new avatar power. So I may give you that information. Um, you can do any type of protection psalm. You want to make sure that you have a protection talisman. That's a great idea. You can purchase these now. You can even make your own and um, <clears throat> consecrate it for your work. And of course, like I said before, be grave and ceremonial in your presence because you can never have too much protection. So the basic way that you would safely summon is do your banishing rituals, do your protection prayers, light your incense, and then you're going to make a circle of the art, okay? The circle of, a, of the art serves as protection and a seal. And inside this circle will be you. And you will also write the names of God, depending on your tradition. So whatever the names of protection would be for you. So the names of God, the names of protection would be within the circle with you. The circle can be chalk, it can be salt, it can be flour. And um, outside of the circle is the incense and a pot, just in case you need to burn the sigil. And so you would need a piece of plain paper and some red ink, and you're going to either print or draw out the sigil of the entity you wish to contact, okay? The pot, in, so you'll need a lighter. <laughs> the pot... Um, in case the entity, you start to feel like you're being attacked, okay? So if you're feeling distressed or that something is occurring that you cannot control, you would burn the sigil slowly in order to begin to bring everything back into focus. The new moon is best for this type of work because that's when spirit activity is said to be the highest. You're going to light a candle. Now, for example, if you're working with Bune, and I'm just going to show you a quick, sigil that I drew. If you're working with Bune, people will tell you work on a Friday, work with the orange candle, work with the green candle. I'm not going to get into that. Do your research, okay? You're going to gaze at the sigil that you've printed off or that you draw until it starts to pulse and come alive, basically. You're going to speak your desire. The room should be darkened with only the light of the candle. At this point, some people will tell you to chant the entity's name um, repeatedly like to get their attention some people will say you should evoke or invoke i will get into that definition later i say for now safely just chant the name now when you feel like you've made contact which you may not realize some people say they got we you know wind and some got knocked over and blah 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 
they saw, you know, the smoke dissipate or they saw a, a wisp of smoke appear. For the most part, contact takes place in the astral plane. Contact takes place in the astral plane, so you would most likely see it in a dream. What you may encounter when you do this, though, are the symbol, the signs of goosebumps coming up on you. And that's how you would kind of know, okay, something has occurred here, okay? Once this is done, you have to dismiss the spirit. Do not forget to dismiss the spirit because if you forget to dismiss the spirit, they will play games in your home. And word of caution, if you have small children, I would say think twice before doing this work inside the home. I would take it outside. So you would dismiss the spirit and tell them to be mindful of the agreement to leave in peace to cause no harm to you or your loved ones. Once you dismiss the spirit now, you can then discard your circle, you know, in the appropriate manner, away from your home, of course. And um, if that would be the end of the ritual, some people do suggest you leave the sigil work up for, you know, like overnight and then you put it away. You would, of course, make sure that no one tampers with it or even sees it really it should be done in private. So that is my very basic video on conjuring or summoning. Now, these entities are so fabulous. So get into the Lesser Keys of Solomon um, or that Infernal Dictionary book. I have so many books here. And um, it will just help sharpen you as a magician just to have the information, okay? Um, don't do this work if you're not ready. Don't feel like, oh, I have to graduate. There is no graduation, okay? But there's nothing wrong with information, so I thank you for your time today, and as always, Om Shreem Brezi.